Hey class, I just want to talk to you about um, how arguments can be made, some good elements and helpful hints for making your argument, because that's what the second half of our course is going to focus on, is taking a step-by-step -step through an argumentative research essay, so I want to put us all on the same basis. So, in an argument, um, there's a lot of things to consider, but one thing to think about, pretty much everything we do is related back to an argument in some way, shape, or form. You might be like, no, sometimes I just talk to my friends about things I like. Well, are you maybe arguing why you like it or defending if we want to change out verbs why you like it or trying to convince them to like the same show, the same song, the same artist as you? Um, so we are used to making arguments. They just look differently depending on, um, you know, the situation you're in and the format you're approaching it and who you're talking to. One textbook provides a definition of argument arguing or argument as the process of reasoning that asserts the soundness of a debatable position, belief, or conclusion. So for this class, when we're going to make arguments, it needs to be something debatable. So sometimes in the past you may have written an essay that where you were given a prompt and you had to say, um, this character is a tragic hero or something like that. And while yes, like technically you're making an argument because you're trying to say like, he, yes, he is, or she is, and here's my reasons why, that doesn't mean it's necessarily debatable. So for this class, we want to focus on that part, making sure that it is something people would actually argue over, debate over, disagree on, um, before saying like, this is what I want to do. And if you think about the advertisement evaluation you wrote, you had to debate, that was debatable. Like people may not agree with you that the advertisement worked. So we have three reasons that we're going to argue. We're looking to convince someone of something. We want to influence someone's opinion, or we want to persuade someone to do something, join in with something, or anything like that. Your argument should be adding to the larger conversation at hand, meaning you're not existing in a vacuum. Um, other people have said things, so there's the they say, and now you're adding your I say to the conversation. So we use research to show what others have said about it, that you're not alone, um, but you also make sure that you're adding to the conversation. You're not just parroting and regurgitating what's already been said. Um, and persuasion and argumentation is not the same. So how we persuade people can build our argument, but it's important to know that they're not always synonymous. So key features that you're going to find in an argument and that you should have. It needs to be a clear, arguable position. So make your position clear on your topic and make sure, as I've already said, it is debatable. It's something we would actually argue. Provide necessary background information, but remember you're not writing an informative essay where you just explain what is the context. Um, we need just enough information to understand what's going on, but not so much that we're bogged down and we're just learning about your topic. Have good reasons, and I recognize that good is relative, it's subjective, um, but your good reasons should probably be logical. They need to be um, believable. They need to be legitimate in that um, it's not like a way out of the um, curve possibility, way out in the left field possibility. So to help make your reasons good, strong reasons, make sure you can include convincing evidence. That can mean you're using expert experts that you're quoting, data you're quoting, um, you're showing that this is a thought believed by many people, um, but use evidence that really speaks to what you're saying, not that's vague or generic and can go, be interpreted in multiple ways. Um, it is a good thing to consider how you're going to appeal to your reader's values. So that's the pathos of the argument, the emotional appeal. Um, again, pathos is kind of uncontrollable, so you can put it in there, um, but you can't always control how someone truly reacts. So don't over rely on that. Have your logical facts, have your credibility by using credible sources, but also think about like, what might I want to appeal to? You also can build your own trustworthy tone through what you write and how you write. So that also includes this last bullet. So careful consideration of other positions. If you are not dismissive and rude towards your opposition, you provide them like a, a unbiased summary, much of an unbiased summary as possible, and you refute them. You say this is why they're wrong, but you do it like civilly. You include reputable sources. You're citing your information. You're using logic that can be followed. That builds your tone. If you are aggressive and you're kind of like attacking people, um, you've lost that trustworthy tone, and so your argument's not going to be as strong anymore. So these are key things I want you to think about as you create your argument. So 
how do I pick my topic? Quick question. Um, if you can choose, which for this next essay, you can choose a topic that you're invest, invested in, that you're interested in, but within reason. Um, if you are super invested in a book series, let's just say um, the Core Throat, uh, uh, Core Thrones Roses series by Sarah J. Moss. You're really invested in it. You feel very passionate about it. It's a soapbox. You can talk for hours on it. And you had to write an argument over, on doing like a character analysis. And we'll just choose um, the character Nesta because she can be considered like con um, contentious, right? In terms of people like her or not. If you are super invested and you feel hotly and you can't get in a conversation about that series or about that character without like your blood pumping, not a good one to write an argumentative research essay on because you are too invested. You cannot step back and be as unbiased as you need to be. And you may not be able to get past your confirmation bias, meaning you automatically assume anything that agrees with you is correct, whether or not that's true. Um, so find something you're interested in, but don't feel, if it's something you feel so passionately about that, like you just can't think straight, maybe not that topic. So start really broad. Um, so you, maybe you want to talk about climate change. Well, what about climate change? And start narrowing it in. You can think about um, different roles related to climate change, what issues are connected to those roles. Um, you could think about the five um, W's and the H, so the who, what, where, when, why, and how, um, to start flushing out that topic a little bit more. Um, for this next essay, you are doing a problem solution essay. So it needs to be, it needs to be a problem. So that's why I say right here, make the topic a problem. As you're choosing your topic, think about your purpose and your audience. So your audience in this um, are other academics, other scholarly readers. So you don't want to sort of choose a topic that they, that wouldn't fit that. Um, you know, like I wouldn't choose uh, a quarter thrones of roses as my topic for a problem solution essay to scholarly writers. That's not, quite in the same realm. Um, but knowing who your what your purpose and what your audience is can help shape it and what aspects you want to approach. So lastly, um, here's some steps to success for you. Not lastly, the second to last but like this is how we need to go through this. One, once you've chosen your topic, identify what you already know. You need to know what you know so that way you can see holes. Then you're going to do research. In this research, you have to look at the position from all angles and perspectives. That means you need to read articles that defend the position that you would debate against. You need to know what they're saying so you can be prepared to like answer that and rebuttal them, but also to get a full 360 view. You, as you're researching, confirm that your topic you chose is actually arguable. If it's if you want to argue something about, um, you know. Public, uh, schools need to have a better defense for students. No one would disagree with that. That's not an argument. So maybe you need to switch your topic to how are they going to do that, right? Um, you may write your thesis, but as you do research, you might you are going to update as you go, as you go, as you go. And then after you've done all your research, you've got a pretty solid thesis. Go ahead and figure out what your reasons are to support that thesis. Then under each reason, you need to pull out support. So you're going to go back to your research that you found, take ideas, and add them in there. So that's where you're now going to move your sources around to fit. You're not going to have one paragraph per source, but instead you have all these sources, these reasons, and you'll take from each source and support where you need to go. Um, and then one thing that you have to do, and I always sit like, have, I don't always, but sometimes students will do it um, towards the end of the essay. They'll be like, hey, my opposition is going to say this. However, this is why they're wrong. Um, just to remind people, like, no, I'm I'm the right decision. This is where we're going. And then maybe you launch into your solution. So as you're building this essay, think about the building blocks of claims, reasons, evidence. So if you go back to that Schaefer paragraph where we would write, here's our topic sentence, here's a concrete detail, here's my commentary. Same idea here. You have one main claim that you're going to support with different reasons and evidence, um, but have your evidence, reason through it. Evidence, reason through it. There are two ways that you can organize this next essay. You can say, um, this is the problem that I want to argue. Here's reason one, it's a problem. Here's reason two, it's a problem. Reason three, it's a problem. However many reasons you have, I'm just going to stop at three for now. My opposition might say this, however, this is why they're wrong. Here's the solution, conclusion. Or maybe in your paragraph, you're like, this is reason number one, this is really a problem. Opposition would say this, this is why they're wrong. Reason number two, it's a problem. Opposition would say this, this is why they're wrong. So you tack that opposition in per reason, and you see that organization a lot when it's a very um, contentious 
maybe topic where there's going to be a lot of arguments against what you're seeing. So you address them as you go instead of just doing it all at once. Um, again, watch your emotional appeal. Don't let it run away from you. Don't only rely on making in, um, the pathos argument. You've got to have logos with this. And again, know your audience. Make sure that the sources you're choosing, the information you want to use um, is appropriate to your audience.